One year ago, I launched this channel, which has accumulated over 14,000 subscribers and 600,000 views. This is abnormal growth in just 12 months. So, what's the secret for my success? Well, it's a video style that took me six years to develop. An editing style that merges fast-paced editing with cinematic animations and funny memes to create the all-in-one video editing style. And one whole year later, still, the most common question I get asked is, So, due to popular demand, in today's video we're going to be breaking down how I edit my own videos. And the best way I can do this is to show you how I edited a video you probably already watched. And to do this, I gotta take you back to February 17, 2024. The first thing I always do is go through my footage and cut out all the bad takes and the silences. I tend to keep my cuts short and precise, cutting exactly before I start speaking and as soon as I finish speaking. However, I like to speed up the pacing of my video, so I'll go through all of my cuts and change them into J cuts. To do this, all I have to do is overlap the audio and drag my video back, so that my audio starts before my video does. I try to keep my content flowing at a faster pace, because later we'll be stacking effects and adding memes, so having a faster pace really complements that. Once I've paced my video properly so that my viewers don't get bored, I'll then plan out my edit. The first 30 seconds is usually the intro, and the rest of the video, it's just the tutorial. Now I truly do believe that the intro is the most important part of the whole video. Because keep in mind, not only does it have to hook the viewer who's already watched 50 videos, but it should also tell them what they can expect from the video. Which is why it's our job to make sure that the intro is engaging with lots of animations, and is heavily edited to make the viewer go, wow, I want to watch more of that. So let's dive straight into how I edited the intro. Let me explain a quick concept to you guys. This is called the show not tell mentality. Take a look at this before and this after. Which one's more engaging? All right, so what's the difference between them? The trick to creating engaging videos is to find ways to show your words visually. We go over this concept in my course a lot because this is the secret to making engaging videos. What I'll do is I'll watch through this first clip in a world of hyper engaging short form videos and the keywords that I'm seeing here are hyper engaging short form content. Then I'll mask myself out and separate myself from the background. I'll drag in a few shorts into my timeline. I'll add a preset to round off the edges then place it right here behind me. I'll drag a VR glow on it and then I'll add a transform effect and animate it popping up from behind me. Then I repeated the same process with another short behind me, then added another short in front of me and added a blur to it to give it this 3D camera blur look. Then I did the same thing with another short. I added my own text preset, then subtitled the first section, and when it came to our three important words, which are hyper engaging short form content, I stacked the text on top of each other and gave them different colors. After that, I made sure that the background darkens as the shorts pop up, topped everything off with a quick zoom in. And real quick before I show you the result, I wanted to create a transition where the short form content filled the screen and transitioned to the next scene. And to to do that, I dragged in a bunch of short form content and animated them so that they move from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. However, I timed it so that they would end up covering the screen for the period of the transition. And this was such a headache. But the result we ended up with was this mind blowing intro. In a world of hyper engaging short form videos, now that you know how much work goes into these videos, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could just click that subscribe button or like the video. Now I know we've covered a lot, but it's only the first part of the intro. And because I don't want you to get bored, get ready to pay really close attention, because we're gonna go through this next section really fast. The next part of my intro is this section right here. First up, I drag in a black paper back. Then I drag in an image of Ali Abdul, add this green overlay, and darken it completely using my color HLS effect. Then I'll animate him being revealed, and time it exactly when I say his name. Then to showcase his view count, I added a screenshot of his videos, placed it on the left, then added this vignette preset that I made, slapped on a glowing text preset, changed it to 500 million views and I did the exact same thing to the subscriber. Then I animated a mask to reveal his image from the left side to the right side and when Ali gets revealed I animated both backgrounds to move off screen. And after all this, this is what our intro finally looks like. A man with 500 million views and 5 million subscribers stands out. This is Ali Abdo. Now real quick, if you're watching this and you feel like there's a lot more to video editing that you still don't know about, don't worry, I got you. Whether you're a beginner or someone with years of experience, you're gonna love this. This is the ultimate online video editing community. And when we made this, we had three goals in mind. Our first goal was to ensure that you learn everything there is to video edit. So you'll have access to 40 courses on the basics of Premiere Pro, advanced editing techniques, the basics of short form content, and three different editing styles. And once you've mastered Premiere Pro, you'll be ready to dive into my nine part course on how to edit my own videos. But it doesn't stop there. 
See, our next goal was to give you the resources that professional editors have access to, which is why you'll get the presets and plugins that I personally use. You'll also get access to a YouTube growth course and weekly scheduled calls where you can ask your questions, get your edits reviewed by me, and dive deeper into editing with our weekly lessons. And to top it all off, our final goal was to create a close community of like-minded successful editors where you can get your questions answered, get your videos reviewed, and meet other successful editors. And all of this comes together to form the ultimate pack for any video editors out there. So, if this sounds interesting to you, click the link down below and join Ultimate Editors today. Now that we can move away from the traumatic experience of editing the intro, it's time to edit the rest of the video. Now, this video is a tutorial. It would be very boring for the viewer to sit here and watch a screen recording of Premiere Pro, which is why I like to layer effects, use cool graphics, and add movement to keep the video somewhat fun to watch. So, let's take a look at exactly how we can achieve this. For this first clip, I'm moving my text under the layers. I'll zoom in on the text, keeping the position, and track the text as I'm moving it. Not only does this help the viewer understand, but also makes it more fun to watch. I use this a lot when I'm moving objects on the screen or in my timeline. In this clip, I mentioned the second half of the intro, and instead of having just a shot of it sitting there, I'll zoom in a bit, I'll click this rectangle tool, and then highlight my section. Change its color to red, add a box mask, and animate it revealing from the left to the right. Then, add a VR glow and make it stand out. I'll change the blending mode to overlay, then add my glowing text preset. I'll write out section 2, and animate it revealing with a mask also. And this is the result you get. It's a simple graphic that lets your viewer focus on the area you're talking about, and I use this effect a lot when I want to highlight certain sections, whether on the screen or in timelines, or if I'm highlighting a specific clip. Now, take a look at this clip. Here, I'm playing around with keyframes in the effect controls panel. So, not only does the viewer need to see the effect control panel, but also the preview window. So, here's what I'll do. I'll first duplicate my layer two times so that we have three total layers. Then, I'll click on the top layer and mask out my preview window. Then, click on the second layer and mask out my effect controls panel. I'll make my preview window on the right side and my effect controls panel on the left. Then, I'll darken the background and add blur to it, and this is the effect that we end up with. I'll use this effect when I need to showcase multiple different things on the screen at the same time. As for my favorite effect that you'll see me use all the time, I'll drag on a vignette preset, but this is basically made up of a Gaussian blur with a mask, and a color HLS effect with a mask as well. And I'll change the mask to fit the shape of the area I'm speaking of. I use this when I'm mentioning certain values or speaking about certain effects in the control panel. Now, these are four different effects that I like to scatter throughout my timeline to keep my video fun and engaging, and bring something new every once in a while. But not all of the video is footage of me editing. Some of it is me explaining a concept. And when it comes to these sections, it's best to explain the concept by visualization, which is why we animate. Take a look at this segment I have here. So the first thing I'll add is my paper background. At the beginning, I say that the idea here is. That's why I'll drag in my text preset and word out that phrase. Then test it, add a glow, and the next concept that I'm talking about is showcasing the things that I'm saying using stock footage. To explain this, I first drag in a sample of my short and place it on the left side. Then add a text saying me and track it to my face. Now that we have both these elements overlapping, I'll make the text move to the top at the end, and I'll make my short pop up from the bottom at the beginning. Next, I'll add an arrow from Premiere Compose poser, change its color to orange, and have it point to the right side of the screen. And here, I'll add a bunch of stock footage, make them smaller, and have them pop up from the bottom. That way, it looks like I'm converting my short into stock footage. And this is the animation we end up with. The idea here is to showcase what I'm saying using stock footage. But we can't have visuals unless we have sound. And I'm sure someone really wise said that. We brought our words to life using visuals. It's time to bring those visuals to life using sound. Our goal here is to have a sound for every movement that's happening on the screen and basically add it so that we can bring it to life. Take a look at this first clip here. I've got a zoom in and a zoom out. I'll find the peak of my animation over here and add a whoosh sound effect by matching it with the peak of the animation. I'll do the same thing for the zoom out. Then I pop into the screen. And at the same time, the background pops down from behind. So we'll add a stronger whoosh sound effect for the both. Then we'll notice this short comes into frame as well. So we'll have a whoosh sound effect for that too. We have a zoom in too, so we'll add another whoosh. And here we have the subtitles separating, so to add a bit more texture, I added a paper tear sound effect which will help the viewer's mind correlate that with the subtitles there. Then another whoosh for the short moving down. And take a look at the difference now. If you notice, Ali's subtitles are actually very straightforward and simple. Now, let's take a look at how I would do that with any other regular clip on the time. Something like this next section where I'm opening up a window in Premiere Pro. I really like to highlight the clicks, so I'll add a mouse click sound effect when I click on the screen, and a whoosh for when we move from the top to the bottom, and another click for when I click again. For this next section, when I'm dragging different sliders around, I'll use a stone slide sound effect from YouTube because it's funny and it just works. And over here, I have these yellow subtitles popping into the screen. For some reason, anything with glow really tends to work with bell sound effects, so I'll go ahead and do that. 
And once that's done, I'll finish up the video by adding music and memes, which is a personal process to each person's imagination. So if you're interested in seeing the final result, this video will be linked down in the description below, or you can click on the top right over here or over there. Thank you very much for sticking through and watching to the end of the video. God bless each and every single one of you guys. And as usual, I'll see you guys in the next video. And don't forget, before you leave, check out one of these two videos. Actually, this time, I'm going to put the one that I really worked hard on, on the left side. Okay, so you know which one's really, really good. But the one on the right side is actually... For those of you who stick around till the end of the video to hear that fart sound effect, comment down below and let me know. You're a G.